Welcome to this important topic of minimum variance control. We will derive the minimum variance control law. We will present an example and a scilab code. We will discuss the utility of minimum variance controllers. Start with the Ormax model we have seen before. Recall that we split this C by A into Ej and Fj and on substitution we got this of course, we made this 0 and got the best prediction error model, but for now we will retain the noise here. The minimum variance control law is obtained by minimizing variations in y at k that is after substituting j equals k. So, when I substitute j equals k, I get this simplified expression j equals k. So, this becomes 0 j minus k. So, I have this term. So, this is the expression we saw in the previous slide and we want to minimize the variance of y at n plus k. So, notice that c of n plus k is independent of the u and y terms here. In view of that, the cross terms are 0 basically I square both sides and take expectation the cross term becomes 0. So, I will have the square of this here and the square of the first two together here. We cannot change the value of the second term on the right hand side because it involves all future noise terms, but the first term can be made 0. So, we let that equal to 0 and when I solve this for u n, I get this expression. So, this is equivalent to letting y hat of n plus k equal 0. So, if this is the case, why did I do all this? It will become clear in a subsequent lecture. So, we let these two terms go to 0 and arrive at the control law. Here is an example of minimum variance control. We have this numerical example. Here k is 1. There is a delay of just one sample. Using the approach that we used before, we get this a, b, c, k terms. In order to do that, you may just want to multiply this whole thing by 1 minus 0.5 z inverse into 1 minus 0.9 z inverse. So, that will come here that is a term here and then if you do that what you get here is the b term and what you get here is the c term which is 1 minus 0.5 z inverse and as I mentioned earlier k is 1 and when I divide c by a I get e k and f k and I have to solve this polynomial equation using one of the methods explained in the previous video and I get E 1 equals 1 F 1 as 0 0.9 minus 0 0.45 z inverse. So, this is what we had and we also have B equals 0 0.5 into 1 minus 0 0.9 z inverse. We can go back and check that. You can see that 0 0.5 into 1 minus 0 0.9 z inverse and this is the control law and when I substitute, I substitute for f 1 here and then e 1 is 1. So, I get this control law. When I simplify it, I get this controller. So, you may want to note this down. We have the scilab code. This file is mv underscore mac 1 dot sce in the textbook we refer to it as McGregor's first control problem that calls this function called mv dot sci. Here is that function defined and the values are given here. The numerator we obtained as 0 0.9 minus 0 0.45 z inverse, denominator 0 0.5 minus 0 0.45 z inverse. Of course, there is a minus sign. Let us see the minimum variance control for Rx. 
remember there is no moving average part, we have 1 here and here is the prediction error model and E and F are obtained like this and minimum variance control law is obtained by forcing y hat of n plus j given n to be 0 for j equals k. So, I get this control law or delta u n equals this. Remember in this case, we get delta u n, you do not write u n, you actually explain delta u n with the help of this term. We have to be careful when we have non minimum phase systems. So, to explain that we will take Ormax model and Arix model. In all of them, we have this B coming in the denominator. If it is a non minimum phase system, then what will happen is this B and this B will have its zeros outside the unit circle. As a result, both controllers will be unstable. So, if B has zeros outside unit circle, that is G is non minimum phase, U is unstable, the control law is unstable in both models and this method does not work. We no longer can use the approach that we have used until now. So, as mentioned in the previous slide, controller is unstable for non minimum phase systems. In fact, the closed loop system may also be unstable. The reason is we did not enforce any stability condition to arrive at the control law. What did we do? We just zeroed y in this and then we got rid of this, we zeroed this and got the control law, we did not enforce any stability condition. So, this approach does not work for non minimum phase systems. Non minimum phase systems are to be handled through the LQG method or the linear quadratic Gaussian method. The details are in the textbook, they are beyond the scope of this course. Now, we need to discuss the utility of the minimum variance control law. Minimum variance control law gives the smallest possible variance in the plant output y, but it also gives very large control effort. As a result, we never use minimum variance controllers. So, what is the utility of minimum variance control law? It serves as the benchmark against which the performance of other controllers are compared. It is pursued further in the textbook. To summarize, we need to obtain a prediction model. We write y of n plus k as sum of past terms and future terms. We try to minimize the effect of noise at k itself. We equate future noise term to 0 and obtain the controller. For example, we obtained the control law for Hormax model as given here, for Arix model as given here. Different methods exist for non minimum phase systems, but we never use minimum variance controllers in practice, we only use it as a benchmark. These topics are beyond the scope of this course, but explained in great detail in the book. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. Thanks for joining. Goodbye.